What is going on YouTube? In this video, we're gonna show off some of our best Black Knight holdbacks from 2021 and 2022. And we're also gonna talk about our direction for the Black Knight project, what we think is gonna bring some new genetics into it, a new spin, and something really, really cool. Selling in the billions each year, Rainbow Mealworms is your one-stop shop for all your insect needs. Their quality feeders and A-plus customer service keep me coming back to support the health and growth of all of our animals. Visit them today at rainbowmealworms.net to place your order. We also have a couple new announcements to make. So announcement number one, we are going to have new shirts. Now I never sold, this was never a sleeveless version. I just cut the sleeves off because I wanted to use it for the gym. But this was our old style shirts and we are gonna have the capability of making these still. Look how wrinkled it is. I pulled it right out the hamper for the video. And on the back, you can kind of see what it looks like. It promotes our social media. It's very tribal blend like, and I really like that. But at the same time, I wanted to create a shirt that is on brand with our logo and all that stuff. And so I'm cooking up something in the works right now. It's pretty cool with the company that we use for making shirts and it will be available soon and hopefully by the November 19th Reptile Expo here in Mesa, Arizona. Announcement number two is also really, really exciting. We are opening up a new website. I know all you guys probably thought I was opening up a store. That might happen one day or a reptile house, you know, a house completely dedicated to reptiles. But for now, we needed an actual online store because our old website crashed from too many photos. Now, if you know anything about building websites, there's a couple different ways you can go. I spent hundreds of hours learning how to edit and use WordPress, which was really, really cool, but WordPress just does not do it for small, simple businesses like myself, as well as Shopify does. And so we are making a store with Shopify right now. I'll talk a little bit more about how to use Shopify maybe in another video, but oh boy, this store is great. It's super easy to navigate. As you can see me scrolling through the page right here, this is just a preview. And when you do click on a photo, oh my goodness, the clarity of photo is amazing it translates perfectly another thing you can do that's pretty cool is for every gecko there's this drop down menu showing you the genetics of where that animal came from what that animal is eating and also our shipping terms if you are unfamiliar with that lastly and this is the really really cool part we actually have a shopping cart now with wordpress i was never able to have a shopping cart because i did not pay for the extra extension to process credit cards. But with Shopify, it's automatically free. Well, not free, it comes with the basic program of Shopify where you can process credit cards and people can make payments on any gecko simply from their credit card account off of the highly secure and protected Shopify processing system. So please guys, when that comes out, it's gonna be a big announcement. I'll definitely let you know. I'm thinking I'm gonna make the website go live in a couple of days, maybe the end of this week, and it will have all of our geckos on there. All right, without further ado guys, let's look at some Black Knight holdbacks. Now I just wanted to bring this gecko out into the forefront to kind of show what can happen with black knights sometimes you're not always going to get a perfectly black animal and this is one of our lesser black knight leopard geckos not lesser like the ball python lesser but it's just it has some pattern seeping through which is still a pretty cool gecko and still carries a fairly decent price tag for an animal like this but what we're going for is pure black and that's where our holdbacks come into the picture. So this looks like a starry night because sometimes little speckles of shed or calcium will be on the gecko. But man, this is what you want when you're breeding for Black Knight. This was one that we produced in, <laughs> almost did a little flippy there. This is a girl we produced in 2021 and now she's breeding for us uh, for the last six to eight months or so. And so she's producing her own babies now too which is really great. Oftentimes with Black Knights, the darkest of the darkest geckos are going to be a little bit smaller. We think in the hobby that that tends to be just a compaction of DNA taking place 
in the gecko's body from a heavily lion bred and inbred lion creating smaller geckos. But with time and more outcrossing, I think we can create super black geckos that are bigger. But for the most part, this gecko is not that small. I mean, a normal female might be 50 to 70 grams, depending on her lineage. And a typical black knight female is going to be about 40 to 60 grams. So maybe on average, 10 to 15 grams less than a normal leopard gecko. Talking about size, here's a holdback leopard gecko we produced that is not pure, pure black but I would rate this an 8.5 or nine out of 10 on the black scale. But look at the size, this is a female. This female is on the bigger side. She is, let's see here, 61 grams. So as I said, she's on the bigger side when it comes to black knight females, but she's lacking a little bit of the darkness. So there might be something to it where the bigger the gecko, hi baby, it's a little kitty, what is it? What? You want someone to play with? The bigger the gecko, the less possibility it has of being pure black. And if that's the case, then this 8.5 or 9 out of 10 would be the best that you could get technically. And it's really, really cool. So just so you could see that I trust group breeding, you know, despite what I said last video about certain things that can happen, these are our most expensive, highest end, most rare geckos and I still have them set up in groups of three or four, the fourth one's right here in the corner. And so you can see that for a larger scale breeder, a group system is going to work fairly well, even for your higher end projects. You just really need to keep an eye on which geckos are being aggressive and which ones aren't. Now, I don't know if this is a size thing because black knights are a little bit smaller than other geckos, but I have not experienced any aggression with 20 or 30 of the pure black knights that we have in groups of four, I have not experienced any aggression with those compared to tangerines, white and yellows, wild types, those kinds of things that I have experienced some levels of aggression with different geckos that I have to remove. But maybe the black knights are just so inbred that it kind of bred out the aggression out of them, which is pretty, pretty cool. So again, this is one of our few groups of pure black knights that we have that was bred to pure black knights. Here's another group of pure black knights that we have. And I think I wanted to, ooh, that one pooped right in my hand. I just caught her as she was pooping. That's so funny. I'm gonna go wash my hand. Leopard gecko poo. A little stinky, but not too bad. Now, oftentimes where you will see a little bit of aggression or biting might be on the tail. So that's an area to keep an eye out for when you're group breeding. But a little bit of nipping on the tail is not horrible, especially compared to some of the other things that I mentioned in the last video and some of the things that I'm gonna show off in a future video. I think this one in my left hand was one of the original Black Knights we brought in as a female. And then this is one of its babies you know or like one of the original females black knight babies and you can see that the lineage gets darker so there's one two there i think there's only three black knights in this group otherwise i'm missing one and sometimes you get something like this where you don't see paleness of the pattern necessarily but you see it as a little bit of a lighter shade of black coloration almost like a dark dark brown which is pretty cool all right now some people ask what do black knight crosses look like well it's gonna vary a lot but in this tub we have four snow black knight crosses and the reason i know that they are snow is because one of the parents was a super snow so whenever you have a super snow and you breed it to a black knight all of the babies are going to be black knight snows but they'll really be 50% Black Knight snows. Because this is snow, it is lightening the gecko a little bit, fighting against that darkness traditionally, but these are four grown up from 2021 and breeding now on their own. Snow, 50% Black Knights. They almost look normal for the most part. Um, just a little bit of extra darkness to them, but within their DNA, possesses the capability of producing very dark animals. And we're gonna see that in the baby room that we travel to next, because the baby room is where these guys' babies are, which would be 75% Black Knights, because these guys were bred back to the original Black Knight to create stronger lines. These geckos are much, much bigger than a pure Black Knight. Let me get a weight. This girl's probably the biggest girl in this group. Let's see what she weighs. Oh my gosh, she's a monster. 76? 
So she's a whole 16 grams heavier than the pure Black Knight that we saw earlier in the video. Let's look at the smallest Black Knight cross, which is this one, and her weight is 47. And so what was the first girl? The first girl was, oh, I don't think I weighed the smallest, smallest girl, but the smallest, smallest girl from the pure Black Knights was probably around 45 grams to 50 grams. And then the big girl that I weighed was I think 60. I'll have to watch the video back. But regardless, you can see these geckos are just chunkier, thicker, bigger all around. Okay, now we actually had a pretty neat project called the Midnight Blizzard Black Knight Project. And you can see these geckos are already looking darker. So these geckos are not snow. And you can see that's, you know, without the snow at 50%, they're looking a lot darker than the last geckos you saw. And the weight's about the same. This, this gecko's about the same size, you know, 55, 60 grams, maybe a little bit more. But these were bred to a midnight blizzard. I don't know where she is in this room, otherwise I'd get her for you, but you've probably seen her on our Instagram or some other videos, or you just know what a midnight blizzard is. A midnight blizzard is a dark gray, purple animal. And for some reason, they're darker than normal blizzards, which are kind of like a white, sometimes a whitish pinkish color, especially if they're albino. But these guys' mom was not albino. She was just a pure purple midnight blizzard. And she was crossed to our pure black night male. And you can see these are her babies. Now these guys have been growing up and breeding for the last few months. And they are producing 75% Black Knight crosses now back to the same pure dad. You can see some of the interesting looking pattern under there, pretty, pretty cool. And so again, when working with Black Knights, you're gonna wanna create some outcrossing projects because the purest Black Knights are often smaller and have been bred to each other for so long that they just need fresh DNA. It's just the way to go for the future. The same thing happens with tangerine. If you start to experience smaller tangerine geckos, runty geckos, defective geckos, it's probably because there's too much overlap in the gecko's DNA because a lot of tangerines were bred to each other and used to make other lines of tangerine. Okay, now have you ever heard of the thousand gram wall for ball pythons? It's hypothesized to be a point in a female ball python's life where she kind of stops eating and which a lot of people don't like because they want their girls to be around 1500 grams to breed. So when they hit that thousand gram wall, they stop their capability of breeding pretty much. But this is not the thousand gram ball python wall. This is the thousand gecko baby wall. And you can see these little two dots of blue means ones that I want to show as holdbacks in a video. And so you can see a lot of blue. Green means they're listed for sale. Red means it might have an issue with it, like a deformed tail, or maybe it's a little smaller than its sibling and I'm keeping an eye on it. And these racks go too deep. So you can see just how many geckos are actually on this wall, but they're all growing up and doing great. There's a little one right there. And you can see a lot of the double holdbacks are gonna be, this is a pure black knight bred to a 50% snow black knight. So that's gonna make 75% black knights. This is another pure black knight bred to a 50% snow. This is black knight to Afghanicus. We noticed with a lot of our black knight Afghanicuses, they have this V shape in the head. So let's take a look at that. Oh, and by the way, now that we're in the baby holdback room, now I can tell you what that special project is for black knights. It is the Afghanicus project. If you haven't seen our video on Afghanicus, I'll leave a link to it here in the top right corner. Afghanicus is a interbreedable subspecies of leopard gecko that is really, really dark and bold and contrasted. It was used to make a lot of the earlier Halloween mask and bold bandits that you see. And I believe even the bold stripes came from that, maybe because it has really, really dark and bold patterning with clean colors of yellow. You often don't see any other color on an Afghanicus except a rich yellow and a rich black. Now, black knights, you want them blacker, right? And so I think Afghanicus is the key and the secret to making black knights consistently more black. So let's check out the first generation of pure black knight to pure Afghanicus. Yay, calcium. Okay, this is just generation one, which means these are 50% black knight and 50% Afghanicus. Beautiful. 
So let's take a look at these one by one. These are two siblings here. I also noticed that a lot of the Afghanicuses have V shapes on their head. Let me show you the V shape one real quick. So the V shapes a little tougher to tell now, but do you see it right there on the top of the face? It's a V. When this gecko was a baby, you could really see that V really, really well. And I've noticed that with a bunch of the other Afghanicus Black Knight crosses having the V. So that just might be a trait or a symbol. There, you can see the V a little better. It might be a trait or a symbol that's going to come along with the Black Knight Afghanicus project a little bit more frequently. So as you can see, since this is not a pure Black Knight, it's obviously lacking a lot of darkness. However, Black Knights don't fully come into their color until they are five to six months old anyway. And these geckos are only a couple months old. So time will tell to see what their darkness level is gonna be. Here's the other sibling. And I incubated these all to be female pretty much so that I could breed their dad right back to them. And another thing that the Afghanicus is going to offer is fresh DNA. Remember I talked about Black Knights being inbred and needing to be outcrossed? Well, it doesn't get more outcrossed than breeding them into geckos that have a slightly different set of DNA, like the Afghanicus do. They are a subspecies from Afghanistan or wherever the Afghanicus comes from, is slightly different set of DNA than the normal macularis. And so that's gonna offer more genetic diversity for the Black Knights to experience less inbreeding issues. Now, since I'm all about outcrossing, this was a Black Knight that came from Turkmenicus background, which is also looking really, really good. Nice, that dark, cloudy, hazy look is really good for generation one. That means there's a lot of darkness in this gecko to be bred back to its dad and create really, really dark babies. So this is Turkmenicus and Macularis with Black Knight. While we're in this section, I just want to show you a couple more Afghanicus Black Knight crosses because they just happen to be in this row. And everyone's going to be a little bit different, right? So you can see this one's actually looking a lot darker than the ones I just showed you. And this is just a generation one. You hear him screaming. This is just a generation one Afghanicus Black Knight angry gecko cross this line we're breeding for hostility and anger and war no i'm just kidding <laughs> sometimes leopard geckos just are that way you know but they calm down over time so anyway pretty cool gecko generation one 50 black knight 50 percent afghanicus and it's sibling a little bit more traditional looking just like you saw so this will probably be it for me showing you the afghanicus black knights now i'll show you some of the pure black knight crosses and outcrosses that we have going on but really excited for the afghanicus project i think the overall darkness and spotting and boldness of the afghanicus dna is going to offer a lot to the color palette of the Black Knight Gecko. So here's a couple interesting sets of babies. Fasciolatus is another subspecies like Turkmenicus and Afghanicus is in the Leopard Gecko world. And these are actually Fasciolatus Black Knight crosses. I just came across them. So I was like, well, I might as well show it, you know? Fasciolatus is often a more snow-like, purple, lighter gecko in coloration. But the really unique thing about Fasciolatus the pattern doesn't start until way up high, like near the shoulder blades of the animal for like a really nice expression, pure fasciolatus. So wouldn't it be really cool to breed fasciolatus into Black Knight and create a gecko that is all white on the sides and just has a strip of black, dark black pigment going down the, the top of its back like a racing stripe. That would be the goal of this project. So this is Fasciolatus Black Knight. And since I'm in this tub and noticing they're, they ate all their food, I'm gonna give them more because we want them growing nice and big and strong and fast. This is generation two Black Knight to Black Knight snow. And it's a really cool example because one is a snow and one isn't. And I can see the snow is white right here. So we took those 50% Black Knights that you saw earlier in the video that were also 50% snow, and we bred them back to the Black Knight dad, and this is what we got. More screaming geckos. <laughs> I guess Black Knights like to scream a lot. No, I don't know. It's just the luck of the draw. This one actually might be snow. They, they both might be snow, but this is now a freshly outcrossed and then bred back to the dad. So it's 75% of the dad's genetics and then 25% of other genetics 
to make the gecko overall bigger, better, healthier, but still maintain its darkness. That's what this gecko is right here. The other one is a little bigger, so we're gonna show this. Huh, maybe slightly bigger, but you could see the white snow marks as well that are in between the pattern. We might sell a couple of these, but if I just hold these back and breed them back to the dad again, look at all that pattern that is kind of like manipulating through the gecko. Super, super cool. Almost like an hourglass or diamond. Really interesting and neat design. Look at that on the tail. Going down the sides of the tail even. Man, the Black Knight is just a beautiful project. So those are 75% original line Black Knight and then 25% new genetics for better, stronger, healthier, less defective babies and animals. And oh man, this one's so dark, I can't even see it. This is, oh, this is pure Black Knight bred to 50% Snow Black Knight again, but look at the variation of this gecko compared to those last two you saw. This one is pure, pure black. And that happens sometimes, you know? So this also is 75% Black Knight and 25% stronger genetics, you know, diverse genetics, but it's pure black, you know? So that's essentially what you want. You want pure black geckos with new genetics in it, outcross genetics, so that you can have bigger, better, stronger babies and animals for the future. What, sweetheart? The cat is trying to get into the sailfin enclosure. What are you doing? She just likes to squeeze anywhere she can. What, do you see a fly? Or are you thinking if you could go up there? She does this cute thing to try to figure out if she could jump on top of something. She reaches with her paw and like touches it. And if there's like a pause with a room, then she'll jump up there because she knows she could fit her body. So funny, cats are hilarious. All right guys, well to keep this video somewhat size wise manageable, I'm actually gonna end it there. There were some other Black Knights I wanted to show, but I could always show those in a different video. It's pretty much what you just saw. Afghanicus crosses, pure Black Knight, so Black Knight to Black Knight, and then 75% Black Knights. Black Knight to 50% Black Knights that are Snow, Tangerine, and Midnight Blizzard. And they're all creating some really cool stuff like you just saw a second ago in the video. Cat is in here. She loves coming into the gecko room and just looking out the window at the birds. If I open the window, she will chirp at the birds. And if I remove the screen of the window, she'll jump right out the window. So anyway, thank you guys. It's been an awesome video getting to show you guys some of our Black Knights, Talk Black Knights. That's one of our most favorite projects around here. And it's a project that I think is gonna go super far in the leopard gecko world and help leopard geckos stay super relevant, moving in the forward direction of the hobby for the next five to 10 years. So thank you guys so much. I'll see you in the next video and until then, have a geeky gecko great day. Peace.